group two is starting, right? Do you have group two members? Yes, sister, please, we are here. All right. <laughs> Hey, group two, I'm not seeing your uh, AU. You. you didn't submit the theory. Sister, please wait. Sister, please, we submitted it. It was Fields and Wolves theory. Yes, please. We submitted it. Please, if you have sample, just forward it to the class page. So that's... Um, Sister, I, please, I have done that. I just was up it to the, our the group class page. page. Okay. Yes, please. All right, so I think the, the work is ready. We can start. Hello. Sister, please, can I start? Yes, please. Good morning, class. I'm Mariam Salisu, Group 2. We are presenting on Fields and Wolves Principles of Nursing. Sister, please, next slide. 
Hello. Yeah, hello. We are following. Yeah, sister. Yeah. Truth and works principles. We have man of an organism. Sister, please, I'm coming on. We have man as an organism, man as a unique human, man and his environment. And this morning I'm presenting on man as an organism. When we say man as, man as an organism, this is, a world, this is when a world being is attained, when the body's psychologic and the body's physiologic and psychological needs are satisfied. Since man is an organism, the needs must be met to enable him to function effectively. These needs are food, water, air, rest and sleep, and elimination. The role of the nurse is to understand how the body functions, okay, and effects on individual. The nurse must ensure that individuals who, who are not able to eat well are fed. This principle, principle indicates that health practitioners, including nurses, need to have a sound knowledge of human needs to provide society with high quality services. Stop, please, the next slide. In summary, in summary, when we say man as an organism, man is considered as an organism because when we talk about organization of the body, it involves three levels, which is atom, molecules, cells, tissue, organs, and organ system. And organism is a whole body, and that is where human being falls. And since human beings falls under organism, there are certain needs that must be met for an organism to live as a whole. Without all these certain needs, human being cannot live. Sister, please. Diana will continue from the next slide. Man as unique human being. Every human being has an inalienable right. And this right, the, the inalienable right, they are right that cannot be transferred from one person to another. It's unique. Every human being has that right. And those rights include life, liberty, pers personal happiness, Anything that will make that human being unique and feel fulfilled, those are the inalienable rights. It cannot be transferred from one person to another. That's why it makes human being unique. Though there are many common characteristics, no two individuals are the same. Even though, even twins that are born on the same day, everybody is unique and they are not the same. This principle can be expressed well by saying, nursing is caring. Individuals are different and must be treated on the basis of their uniqueness. So that's why when we come to the hospital, we say that we don't treat 
patients that have the same sickness as the same people because everybody has his own uniqueness. Maybe we uh, patient A and patient B will be having the same sickness, example, diabetes, but patient A be anxious, patient B may not be anxious. That does not mean the method we are using to cater for patient A must be the same measures you may use to cater for patient B. B. Everybody is unique and must be treated in that unique way. If patients A cried when given injection, that's not me. Patient B would do the same. That's what I just explained. Everybody acts differently based on what they face individually or on a daily basis. It's unique. Madam, please. Madam, the next slide. Hello. Hi. Madam, please do get me. I don't know if my internet went off when I was talking. I was breaking, but I think you, you have explained yourself. I don't know if the other members didn't hear you. I was able to follow, even though it was breaking, um, I was able to follow what you were saying. environment. Man's environment can be class dynamism, security and insecurity, biological, which includes all viable things apart from man, such as bacteria and other microbes and physical environments, which includes non-living aspects such as air, which are vital existence. When we talk about the environment of a man, is anything that surrounds the individual, which includes clear air, water, moderate temperature activities, healthy food, everything that makes the individual to live, the environment in which he lives, the room he lives in, the friends around him, his, his or her families, all those things are considered as the environment and this environment must be serene for them for man to live. So if the individual's environment is unclean, that's what causes sickness. Like when we go way back to the beginning of nursing, where Nightingale talk about the environment, where when one is sick, his or her environment must be catered for clean from bacteria and microbes so that Starting from that point, the person starts gaining um, his or her strength back. But if the environment is not clean or unkept, like what 90 girls started from the beginning, then the individual will continue to be sick. But the environment is very important. It's not just the physical things we see that makes the environment, including our families and friends, the air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, and all those things are considered as our environment. And it must be serene and clean for us to be healthy. Madam, please, can we go to the next slide? Man influences environment and environment influences him. man. It's true. 
wherever we live influence have an influence on us for example if you live in an environment where there's always noise 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 or industrial area where machines and all those things are making noise all the time the individual grows to be used to that environment and even in his or her, her talking you can see that he or she is always shouting because he's always in a noisy environment and decides that if an individual lives in a quiet place the same way when that person finds him or herself in a noisy area the person wouldn't be able to stay so in both ways our environment have effects on us and we also have effects on our environment the same way if we live in a dirty environment even if you are put in a clean environment because it has that influence on you you will still be unkept you still keep yourself that even though the environment was clean before you came there's a constant interaction between man and his environment the relationship between man and his environment are never static always changing as man relates with the environment he lives as man relates with the environment he needs to be protected from external causes of illness so there's that constant relationship between man and his environment and it changes because we don't stay at one place sometimes the people that comes we live with or the people that, that at one point in time come into our life bring influence which may be good or bad that also have an effect on us that's why it says that the environment is never static it's always changing based on where you find yourself the people around you the kind of things you see around you it makes you either change for good or bad therefore when we bring it to the environment of um, nursing we our job is always to keep the person healthy from bacteria therefore we try as much as possible to educate the individual to take good care of his environment to get rid of the external causes of the illness which are the bacteria the microbes and all those of microorganisms that may cause us to be sick therefore we educate us to keep our room healthy not just our room our physical body and all those stuff just to protect us from the external causes of um, um, illness okay that's very very great explanation there but you made mention of a statement you said when someone lives in a noisy environment the person yes. tends to also talk or shout apart from that attitude that is an attitudinal effect what about the health implication of staying in a noisy environment, uh, maybe an industrial environment whereby there is a lot of noise? What are some it of the health implications? Your hearing may be impaired. Very good. That's very because nice. It, because of the it's noise. Okay. It's okay. The answer is right. You just mentioned the right okay. answer. Okay. You get okay. hearing impairment. That's okay. All right. And it may cause stress too. A stress. Stress. That's also another serious health implication that can also result from a noisy. Because you're unable to get a proper sleep and all that. And that inability exactly. to sleep well can cause or add on to your already existing stress in life and all that. That's very well said. Thank you. Oh, okay. So the environment needs to be considered as an integral aspect of nursing particularly with respect to patient safety that's what i talked about because the nurse's job is always to make sure that his or her patient is in a safe environment good health and there's no external causes of illness the role of the nurse is to help in reducing or eliminating physical biological, social, chemical, or microbial factors in the environment that contribute to illness or injury, which I already talked about, because everything we do is just to keep us healthy in our environment. One of the ways of protecting the individual is through education for them to adapt to the healthy lifestyle. 
not everybody know the proper way of living or to keep his environment serene for good health. So therefore, through education, as a nurse or a midwife, through education, we can help the individual to come to that point of understanding that it's not just dressing or doing other stuff that makes you healthy, but the little things, the basic things like keeping our environment clean. Once the environment is clean, it will keep the air we breathe too clean. So starting the education from that step, it made the individual understand and together we keep ourselves clean and our environment clean and we weigh off sickness from us. Madam, please, next slide. Okay, so I think that's the end of your presentation. Okay. Yes, thank you uh, very much. Any question to the group members? Yeah, in the absence of- No, madam, it's well understood. It's well understood. Okay. So um, the one who presented on man as an organism, Mariam, how would you apply this to caring for your patients on the ward as a midwife? Madam, please, is a question to everybody? Or yeah, just all, the one? All members, all group members. Okay. Madam, she made mention of an organism is made up of systems. So if we bring it to the um, hospital or our health system, because we are made up of system. If one patient is sick, we don't just assume that what is a, we don't just assume that let the patient this and the patient will be okay. But we go to the bottom line, which part, which system of the person or the organism is suffering from this disease? Or if the person give this signs or symptoms that I'm feeling this, I'm feeling that, it directs you to the exact system or the exact cause of that sickness. I don't know if I'm making myself clear. It's not clear at all. Hello? Hello, um, it's not clear. Hello? Hello, can you hear? It's my clear. Yes, please, madam. Please. Human being, he ma she made mention that an organism or human beings are made up of systems. So when we bring it to the hospital setting, when a patient comes with a disease, based on the symptoms and signs, you know where exactly the, the local point or the exact place where the disease is starting from. Even though some diseases, may, may, some symptoms may be because of um, uh, is it referred them and them or something like that? I've forgotten. So if the person says, I have a sore truth, I have a running nose, you know that the disease is affecting the digestive tract system. You not go and be talking about the leg or giving pain for the leg or anything you go directly to the uh, digestive trust system. <laughs> okay, thank you for your efforts. Any other? Madam, am, am I making sense? Yeah, I say thanks for your efforts. Any other explanation on that same point? Yeah. 
All right. Um, I think um, everything you have said makes sense, but all that I wanted you to just press on was to appreciate the fact that when you are caring for individuals, all individuals have unique personalities. As she rightly mentioned, the definition of how organisms are made up of cells and each cell is different from the other cell. And as they develop through the developmental process, they need the food, the air, whatever to develop. One must appreciate that. Um, the example she gave, I think, regarding man as an organism, once you know the unique makeup of each human being and how they need to be cared for, as a nurse, you have to understand the physiological uh, processes of each individuals and then try to care for them as the need be. Okay, you, were, you rightly mentioned on the fact that once man is an organism, so it means when you are caring for your patient, don't forget about the basic needs of your patients. If you look at the needs here, we are talking about the food, the water, the rest, the sleep, all these are what physiological needs. And so when you are caring for your patient, the physiological needs are the first priority according to Maslow hierarchy. The same applies to, so you realize that most uh, theories, the wolf and first and wolf principle have also have similar way of caring for a patient, but they have taken it in three cardinal principles. And this principle is man as an organism, man as a unique personality and the man and his environment. So all that I'm trying to link here is that when you're able to appreciate what these theorists are coming up with, what is the theorist's understanding of man as an organism? All he's saying is that each organism needs certain basic needs to help. So physiological needs is the same as basic needs. So if you see basic and you don't see physiologic, they are virtually the same. These basic needs that these individuals need will help them to function well. And so what man as an organism, just appreciate that organism needs to thrive and they need to what? They need to grow, they need to eliminate. And all these activities regarding organisms developments and their life processes, you'd have to inculcate or you have to make sure you have in mind the basic needs or the physiological needs of your patient in order to give them the best of care. So that is all it is about. I realized my lady was applying assessment, health assessment here, trying to know which system is being affected. Yes, it's not out of place, but the basic principle here, explaining what man as an organism is, just appreciate the fact that every organism needs to grow, every organism needs to eliminate, every organism needs to respire. What are the basic physiological activities that will help these organisms to um, grow and work or function in the normal realm? And what they will need are the simple physiological needs, which is the food, the water, the air, and all that that would help them to what develop. So that is all about it. Okay, thank you very much, group two. Let's see what group three have for us. Do we have group three members with us? Do we have group three members available? Let's see. Hello. Group three, I don't have your work. I don't know whether you sent it. 
in my mail. I'm just praying that we finish the entire, um, hello. Hello. Please, do we have group Please, we have What's our group four? Today, only 14 participants. I'm just wondering. Group three, are they here with us? If group three people are not there, group four. Do we have group four members with us? Group four. Group three. Which is which? Group four. Group four, okay. Okay, group four. Introduce yourself and let's start. Good morning, sisters. For example, maybe you accidentally put the stem sign. Madam, good morning. Good morning. Please, we are group four. And we are going to talk about River Rubin. A magnet. River Rubin, Madam, please, can I start? Yes, please. Okay. River Rubin was one of the first specialists in maternity nursing. Her work helped broaden maternal nursing to include nursing and uh, caring for mothers. Her work helped broaden maternal nursing to include caring for mothers mental well-being before and after birth. She received her bachelor degree from Hunter College in 1941 and master's degree in nursing from Yale University in 1946. Rubin, Rubin then started work with the Frontal Nursing Service. She worked as a midwife in can, Madam, please, can you help me with that? <laughs> Pardon? I said, can you help me with that way? Kentucky. 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 Yeah, she worked, thank you. She worked as a midwife in Kentucky before going to Yale in to complete her master's in mental health. She published an article of maternity and maternity nursing in 1960. 
she differentiated maternal nursing from obstetric nursing. She argued that obstetric nurse, nurses' role only includes helping the physician in delivery of the child, whereas maternal nurses assist the new mothers in transitioning into her role as a mother. She also published work on mother mother child relationship which spanned spanned food and feeding food feeding pregnancy self esteem and mental well being rubin identified four maternal tasks that had to accomplish during pregnancy for a woman to become a mother these tasks were seeking self passage for herself and and her child ensuring acceptance of the child, binding into to her unknown child and learning to give to give of herself madam please next slide judith Good morning. Good morning. Please, Good I'm morning. Judith. I'm presenting on maternal role attainment theory. Maternal role attainment theory specifies the influence that the environment on that has on maternal role attainment as well as paternal role attainment and the development of the child. This is the maternal rule attainment theory and it was developed to serve as a framework of a framework this is the this is the maternal rule attainment theory and was developed to serve as a framework for the for nurses to to provide appropriate healthcare interventions for non-traditional mothers in order for them to develop a strong maternal identity. This mid-range theory can be used throughout pregnancy and postnatal care, but is also beneficial for adaptive or foster mothers or other who find themselves in the maternal role unexpectedly. The process used in this nursing model helps the mother develop an attachment for attachment to the infants, which in turn helps the infant from a bond with the mother. This helps develop the mother, mother child relationship as the infants grow. Sister, please, the next slide. Stages of the maternal theory. Nurses, persons, nurses, persons or environments are given care and education to women during childbirth while caring for the new mother. Other members of the family could also be considered since when there is stress or depression within one of the family members, it can affect the mother and nursing process in the maternal role attainment theory. The nursing process in the maternal role attainment theory follows some stages. The first stage is the anticipatory stage that comes with the social and the physiological ad adaptation to the maternal role. This includes learning expectations and may include the role of a mother. The second stage is the formal stage 
begins at birth and is when the mother intimates expects expects on a uh, modern skills. Madam, please next slide. Mm -hmm. Emanuela, please continue from here. New mother's behavior is influenced by other beings in her social group, like family members <coughs> or even nurses. Mother rely on others for decision making. The third stage is the personal stage in the joy of being a mother. The mother finds peace, harmony, confidence in confidence in the maternal role, role of, of the baby too. The primary concept of, of this story is the developmental and interreactional process, which occurs over a period of time. In the process, the mother bonds with the infant acquires competence and general caretaking tax. And then <clears throat> comes to express joy and pleasure in her role as a mother. Madam, next slide. Aggie, Aggie, let me continue why. Okay, Maggie. Okay. Um, the social support theory. River Rubin's writings into social support theory comes with intrapartum nursing skills, which revolve around facilitating a woman's ability to totally surrender her body to a uniquely, a uniquely feminine task, that of giving birth. This category of social support facilitates coping and problem solving through advice suggestions, guidance, and information to new mothers. Intrapartum nurses commonly provide this type of support by explaining what is happening or suggest, suggesting positions that might be more comfortable to the mother in labor, especially. Rubin wrote that keeping women informed in, in general and about labor progress specifically was essential to their self-image. She felt that information and advice help mothers cope and labor by providing hope and reducing pain and intensity. Okay, so at this juncture, I want to find out. This is the one of the... Pain intensity. Yeah, this is one of the only midwifery currently that is what I'm aware of. Probably there might be new ones that has evolved that I'm not aware of. And um, Rubin River Rubin's theory has stepped out to talk about the pre intrapartum, the antipartum, intrapartum, postpartum. Um, nursing or midwifery skills that needs to be um, given to mothers throughout this period. The question is, this social support theory we are talking about, is this something that is being given even before? So it starts from the pre-ante. During the antenatal, do we give enough? What are some of the activities that is being done? by a midwife to help them achieve um, or to help them apply. Let me go back to you. Hello. Hello. Madam, please, the question again. Yeah, I'm saying that. Ruba, please, theory. This story is taking us through the antenatal, the intra partum and the postnatal or the postpartum care for our mother. And so I'm asking throughout 
you if you haven't been maybe some of you have not really um delivered but those who have gone through these processes before or have even accompanied relative through these processes the question i'm asking is are midwives doing diligent work in applying Ruba, Rubin's theory in their nursing, their midwifery care? And if yes, what are the activities that you think they are doing to establish the fact that indeed it's being applied? And if it's a no, what do you think they are not doing that they could do better? Is the question clear? Please, is it to the group? Yes, to the group, the entire group, not just to the members, all the members. Yeah. So, anyone who is ready can answer the question. We'll proceed. Hello, madam. Mm -hmm. Madam, in my opinion, some of the midwives are not giving that social support to, uh, to pregnant women. Because some, some of the teenagers who get pregnant in their early stages may be suffering from depression and stress and all that. But the kind of treatment some of the midwives will give uh, to these teen teenagers when they come for maternal care, it's bad. And it will increase their depression and stress. And it can also affect the baby they are carrying. Okay. So, okay, what you are saying, what are some of the things, is it that you have seen someone going through that before? Or you've accompanied someone, or is just your own view about how midwives operate at the facility. Where did you get this your information from? That you share with me. Um, my cousin's friend got pregnant in an early stage when she was around 16 years. Okay. And then when my cousin went to accompany her at the hospital, hmm. they they were insulting her. Uh -huh. So obi a wuko school on that kind of thing. Yeah. Hey. So she even thought of aborting the pregnancy because of the stress and the insults and all that. So it's something that most most of the midwives are doing at the hospital. So going forward, what do you think in your small capacity you think should be done to help curtail this kind of maltreatment towards our teenagers who get pregnant? We can educate them mm. because not every teenager can abstain from sex. Okay. So the least we can do to help them is to advise them to use contraceptives to abstain from sex. And even if they, they get themselves pregnant, mm -hmm. we should advise them. Any kind of advice we can give them to make them not feel depressed or stressed. Thank you very much. Let's proceed. You're welcome. Okay. Examples of how nurses provide intrapartum. Samples of how intrapartum nurses provide emotional support include staying with the neighboring mother, making eye contact, touching her hand, or telling her that those contractions are really strong. You are doing a great job. Emotional support yields a sense of comfort and security and a feeling of being cared for. One-to-one -one labor support is associated with a reduced rate of operating breath and with long-term improvement of parenting and breastfeeding rates. 
Labor support by nurses may reduce the cesarean birth weight. The next slide. Lina, please continue. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Ruben. Ruben, orientation of disability, mother doing labor. Nurses can help. <coughs> Nurses can help a woman coping ability by providing specific categories of information that is defining source, beginning, and the end of con the end of contraction pain. End of contraction pain and orient orienting her to the time that she that is the rate of process and distance. Travel towards the unlimited goal of delivery. Rubin, Rubin believed that such a time orientation helps to anchor the mother to the real world. Rubin in 1960 and collaborate further elaborated further on the nursing skills needed to provide adequate comfort to labor to laboring mothers she noted that individualized individualized touched and interpersonal communication that is that is a significant in a way that in the way that verbal language is not intra postcard that nurses involves around facilitating a woman's ability to a woman ability to totally surrender her body to a oh, on unique female tax that is given birth. Oh, Nana, my go up, Madam. Please, the next slide. Hello. Yeah, come and put down the lights for me. The lights. I didn't see you. Oh, the lights. No, no, don't make noise, please. Yes, I'll put the lights. who are knowledgeable and skillful can help mothers. Coping ability by being supportive and responsible to their mothers. Nurses should communicate by eye to eye contact, verbal, verbal confidence, reassuring touch, and restful message. The knowledge, the knowledge and skill of helping nurses enhance mother ability to cope with labor and prevent. Immobilizing spread of 
in the context of labor. Instructor support indicates the nurse as an instrument, instrument to alleviate pain and suffering through therapeutic use of self. Madam, please, next slide. So with all this information, next slide, next slide. What are you telling us? Ruben's Madam. orientation of disability. In summary, what's, what is your slide telling us? For my own understanding, in summary, it's like the nurse need to explain the pain of labor and how the client would bear the pain of the labor. And you should watch um, the client through contact Maybe if the person is in pain, the person will say, Madam, uh, the person will not say, Auntie Midwife, my here, my here. So you should observe the person. And as the person is talking, you see, she may be squeezing her face. So you should know that, ah, this person is not all that well. She's in pain. That's mine. And by touching the person, can even make the pain to go away. So I, I know as you are speaking, you're also a mother because I could hear you talk to your children. What was your experience, your own experience during labor pain? Did you go through labor pain or you went through which yes, means? I went through labor pain, madam. You went through labor pain? My, yes, please. My experience was um, when I saw the show, mm -hmm. when I saw the show, I, my mother was with me in Cape Coast here, so I told her, went to the hospital so mm -hmm. as soon as i went to the hospital the midwife did the examination mm -hmm. and she said ah finger tip na wabi so the way she said finger tip na abi no so mm -hmm. i was confused ah why should i come because then she said it's a finger tip which means i haven't reached anywhere yeah so when i the the pain was come then she told me oh the pain will be on and off but later i went in the night so I met the afternoon midwife. So they hand over me to the night midwife. So one was saying, eh, eh, you did cramp, it will not come. So it was paining me, so I was shouting. So a certain young midwife, I think she was just, she has just completed. So she came and she was showing me the sacral massage. But when the pain is too much, I shout, another midwife will say, ah, Rabbi, do you did it, Papa, you did it, but the sad experience that happened at that hospital, madam, when it was time for me to push 10 cm four, madam was on the couch. So pushing, I was not able to push. So this woman decided to do a pace. So I heard the midwife begging, madam, please don't do a pace, she's roomy. But before she did a pace, madam, the savlon water, she threw it in my face there because I'm not pushing, so I'm hurting the baby. So she threw the savlon water in my face, so madam. That's for that one, it was a bad experience and she did it by force. Oh, sorry. So that was the pain I went through. So you could see that at this point, um, the touching, the reassurance, all that were, were not really implemented. Yes. Uh -huh. So now that you are also coming up, I believe you have experienced a very bad one and you don't wish any woman in your in your situation or in your position will surely go through such a madam please are you far from the computer you can't hear you. are you far from the speaker can you hear me i don't hear you very well oh it's only me hello. Yeah, hello is it better is it is it better yes. is it better yes yes Madam, it's a bit okay now. Yeah. It's a bit okay, all right. No, no it's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that um, based on this experience, you yeah. could really tell that during the intrapartum care, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, Ruba, Ruben expect that, the ideal thing is that even before you reached labor, you should have been given the orientation 
on what you should be expecting, what you should be doing, how you should manage your pain, how you should even push. You know, you have you have a proper way of pushing to enhance the child to come out quickly. We have a way of, I mean, when there is a contraction, what do you do? When there is contraction and the pain is severe, what are you supposed to do? You are supposed to breathe fast. That deep breathing exercise, I'm sure as you are moving forward with yes. your midwifery, um, you'll be giving the exposure and what you need to do for your client in order to give a proper um, care through um, the labor process. And so we have some few techniques that doesn't even cause shouting at your patient, insulting your patient, giving all the inhuman treatments that most um, midwives do give to, you, to their clients. And so that's why the statement was, if you have a very knowledgeable midwife or nurse rendering care to his clients, of course, from beginning to the end, from interpartum and from antenatal through labor process to the end of, I mean, the labor product, the postpartum period, this care would be explicit, would be perfect, and the woman would enjoy the care that has been rendered. Okay, so the underlying bottom, the underlying information is the midwife should have in-depth knowledge on what really, how um, the, the whole process goes to the end and what needs to be given to our clients so that they would cooperate when the patient understand what is going on. If you were aware of not shouting so much, I'm sure you were exhausted. So when it reached at the pushing point, you couldn't push any longer. Maybe yes, that was yeah, really yeah. what happened. But if you were given the education before the labor pain started, and you knew that when the pain is severe, I need to breathe faster, or I need mm -hmm. to ask someone to give me a massage, or I need to clench on something, or I need to do A, B, C, D to reduce the pain or to be able to cope with the pain. You wouldn't have used all your energy in the shouting process, you know. So all the bottom line here is that if you have enough knowledge, or if your, your, your nurse or your midwife is knowledgeable enough, he will be able to take these women through a skilled um, training, guidance, protection, mentoring, reassurance, and all that to enable them to cope with the pain. Because it's a coping process. Whether you like it or not, the pain will come. And for the other mothers who didn't go through the labor pain, there is also another sort of pain that if you go through cesarean section, of course, after every post, uh, after every operation, there must be pain afterwards. And that's another form of pain and its way of management. We also have another way of managing that pain. But we are talking about the labor pain. It's inevitable. It's only few women who say that, ah, maybe the minimum say the pain. They will just go, you know, we have the type, different type of pelvis. The, is it the platyloid pelvis? I've forgotten the type of pelvis. We have that type of pelvis, which if the woman is in labor, it will take just some few minutes and the baby is out. The gynecoid pelvis, that one will take the normal duration for the labor process to end before the woman um, delivers. And then we have the android one, that's the male pelvis. That one will take a very longer time. So for that one, they don't even advise the woman go through labor pain. They will just educate you and let you understand the need to go through cesarean section. So the underlying factor here is we should appreciate the need to give proper education to our mothers who are about to even go through labor before the labor process. Because during the labor process, who can say any partner on to you? They don't simply understand. Most of these midwives who act in a very funny way and uncultured way and unethical way to their clients, most of them might not have even do not even appreciate what labor pain is. They don't even know what goes in into doing labor pain and they act the way they want. Until they reach there, I remember once there was a, a, a midwife. This is a, just a story um, someone shared with us that they were having with their colleagues. And when mothers come and they are going through this labor pain and they are shouting on top of their voices, hey, just like you mentioned. 
among pretty Muslim and sort of things and all that, and you even end up insulting most of these uh, mothers. And one day, one day, God, in His own wisdom, helped this same midwife who have been shouting and insulting other mothers regarding the way they shout during the pain process. And then she also was in now in their own. She also went through the same labor process, and her shouting was more. I think were well, just more than what the other clients used to do, and now their cal- <laughs> their colleagues also decided to refer her by telling her, "I don't know, small shouts, huh? <laughs> and sort of." And then she said, "Oh, stop, stop, stop! My is the true labor. Yes, you know. Now that you do know, so the oh, we did the na ye tiyan on so so we enjoy the day. What's it? On the day is now what the true labor." Dami, now my pain is a true labor, you know. So we are saying that until you reach there, you will not appreciate what people are going through. And so let's let's try, even if you haven't given birth before and you are going to practice, let's appreciate that pain management varies from individuals, just like wolves and principles mentioned about the uniqueness of individual. Someone would get injection and stand quietly as if nothing is happening. The same applies to someone going through pain and he, the person will never shout, will never make noise, but you could see the person clenching on staffs and doing walking and maybe doing other stuff. Everybody has a way of managing pain. And all we are saying that if you know individual differences and how people are managing their pain or how they manage their stress, you don't compare patient A to patient B and it shuts people down to keep quiet because someone is keeping quiet and you are shouting. You can educate the right way to do things so that they can also um, come out or deliver successfully um, without any um, harm to themselves as well as harm to their babies. And so basically, I think this is all that Ruba Rubin is trying to put across to all midwives. So let's see the rest of the presentation. Okay. Who is taking us? Hello. Yeah, hello. My name is Harriet. Okay. Mm. But mm, conclude both social both social support literature and Rubin writings provide a theoretical foundation for intrapartum nursing care. Rubin described nursing as, a, as an interactive helping process and suggested that intrapartum nurses should, should, create, should create in the laboring woman, laboring woman feelings of acceptance and of being valued. Regarding the nurse, as a support provider, Ruben Clary established both the privilege and commitment that nurses have when they help women through the valley of the shadow that all women that all women work to have a child. Okay, and I and think I, yeah. this side it mm-hmm. says. Mm-hmm. I'm listening. Madam, please, this side, you see that like this, the, the, the social aspect, like the society, the husband, the, the family members around that person or the pregnant woman, we should all be educated on how to go about pregnancy and eat labor. Yeah. That's a very good summary there. So we are saying that um, if you are not married and you are giving birth, your parents, your siblings should also understand what goes through it, as he, she has rightly mentioned. If you are married, they should inculcate or they should include, sorry, you should include your husband in the whole process, as well as the family around you in the whole process to be able to help you. Because after delivery, it's also another task that some people go through postpartum depression 
because of the stress associated with caring for a newborn baby into their own lives you know whilst other others get the joy in caring for these babies others go through depression because they haven't those who go through joy are usually people who have accepted the need to have those babies are ready for the baby and they are ready for the challenge ahead others go through depression not because they don't like the baby but there's the activities you know you have to sometimes wake up in the middle of the night to feed to sit up breastfeed your baby changing of diapers if you are doing this all alone without any help seriously if god is not by your side you can really go through depression and we are saying as ruben rightly mentioned or as our presenter rightly mentioned there was a very important need to involve family members as well it's just example your husband your mothers your friends anybody around your social cycle who can be of great support to help you through pregnancy to delivery is very very important to bring this child and again the need to establish a great bond you know now that mothers are working we don't have time for breastfeeding and all that that bond is very very essential after breastfeeding you have to play with your kids establish that bond you know so that that love can make you have impact on your kids or children as they grow if there is no love between you and your kids advising them is very very difficult so when you talk to them they don't see why you don't you are even talking to them and all that you know so that is also very very essential part of the rubin's um, presentation okay group four thanks very much for your presentation any question to the group members Shamsia, today Shamsia, I didn't hear from you. Barbara J, Emanuela, were you part of the presenter? Judith has spoken, Margaret has spoken. Where is Shamsia? Is Alas and Shamsia with us? Let me see the participants. Is she absent? Yes, please. Okay. And then Emma, Emma Kwame is also absent. Yes, madam, I'm not absent, I'm here. <laughs> Did you present? Yes, madam, I talked for the um, disability of uh, Rubin um, theory. You, what about you, Manuela Opoku? But I was supposed Madame to was the speech. one who... Emanuela. Madam. Did you present? Madam, no, I was to present on the stages of Matena. Well, you weren't around. You were late. Barbara J. Yes, madam. Barbara J. Is Barbara absent? Yes, my okay. Okay, group group three, are you ready? Group three? Yes, sister. I don't have your slides. Sister. Can you please send it to the WhatsApp platform? Okay. Same with group five. I'm hoping that we end the group presentation today so that we have a discussion for the mid -sem. And then we also touch very quickly on those areas we haven't really touched in the course outline. And then, and when are we supposed to finally end the online lectures, Mariam? Officially, when are we supposed to end? And the first December 21st, and today is four. Pardon?
group five please oh, okay i have group five's presentation here theoretical medicine okay let me just open it for group five and then let's see we have from here uh, okay and this is for group five right so Okay, group three members today you were late. What happened? Sister, the network, oh, I don't know why. Hey, network. I joined and I. Net, Sister, net... it's on and off. I net... can't with you. It's... Okay. All right, so. Let's start with number one. What slide now? Uh, it's shared. Can you see? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. So we are. Good listening. morning, class. Good morning. Good morning. So we are presenting on best in human theory and healthcare system model. Group three members. Okay, the next slide. So by the end of today's presentation, students will have a vivid understanding on one, the biography of Betty Newman, Betty Newman's theory, the four major concepts of Newman's theory, and lastly, Newman's Betty Newman system model. So we're talking about the biography of Betty Newman. Betty Newman was born in 1924 in Lowell, Lowell, Ohio. She completed BSc in nursing in 1957 and MS in mental health, public health consultation from UCL in 1966. She holds a PhD in clinical psychology. She began developing her health system model while a lecturer in community health medicine at the University of California, Los Angeles. Betty Newman's model was published in 1972 as a model for teaching total person approach of parents problems in nursing research. It was a refined and, re and subsequently published in the first edition of complete, first edition of conceptual model for nursing practice in 1974 and in the second edition in 1980. The model were initially developed in, were initially developed in response to graduate nursing students, expression of a need for course content that would expose them to, that would expose them to breadth on nursing problems prior to focusing on specific nursing problem area. Next slide, sister. Yeah, caps, caps, caps. Um, why caps? Huh? We don't do presentation in caps. It's very unethical. 
Wow, reading is a word. Reading in caps is not an easy thing to do. Why did you decide to leave it in that light? Like the Newman's theory. The Newman's system modeling is a nursing theory based on the individual's relationship to stress. The reaction to it and reconstitution, reconstitution factor that are dynamic in nature. The theory was developed by Betty Newman, a community health professor and counselor. This theory was developed by Betty based on the person's relationship to stress. The response to it and reconstitution factor that are progressive in nature. The Newman system presents a broad holistic and system based, based method to nursing that maintains a factor of flexibility. The key function of the nurse in Newman's theory defines nursing as action which assists the individual, family, and groups to maintain a maximum level of wellness and the Primary aim is stability of the patient-client system through nursing intervention to reduce stresses. So when you talk about diabetes, okay, I was about to explain the other way. So with this presentation, all what Betty Newman is trying to say is this theory was based on how a family and group are able to maintain a, a, a level of, a maximum level of wellness and to also um, have a stable relationship and a primary aim, have a stable relationship between parents and client system by using the nursing, uh, the nursing intervention to reduce stress. Mr. Lizzie, please, can you take it from this side? Pardon? I'm talking to you, Salizi, to continue from this slide. Okay. Okay. The four major uh, concepts of Newman's theory a person. Each layer consists of five person variable or subsystems. Physiological. This refers to the physiochemical structure and function of the body. Again, it also refers to mental process and emotions. So we have the social cultural also. That refers to relationships and social cultural expectations and activities. Then the spiritual. This refers to the influence of spiritual beliefs in the environment. This also refers to those processes related to development over the lifespan. So when a person goes to a stress, it may be physiological, social, cultural, spiritual, or development. When we talk to the physiological, it may be body changes when the person is not feeling well or sick. A person may go to stress. The person may not be on his or her own self. He will feel uneasy. And we have the social culture also. That refers to the relationship between uh, two or more people. If there is a conflict between a person, uh -huh. one person, or the other, the patient will feel uneasy, will not feel okay. You, you think of why and how the thing happens, so you feel uneasy. 
And when you talk to the spiritual also, people may go to church and see some pastors. They may tell them spiritual issues that this person, based on your illness or your financial issues, this person is behind of it. So you, the person may go into stress. That will not help that person. And when we go to the developmental also, it may relate to the environment. Maybe you live in an area where there is a very much noise. You may not get a very sound minded when you want to learn or you want to sleep or you want to have your quiet time. So this may lead to a stress. Adam, next slide. No. Well, when you talk to the environment, okay, so with the, the environment, internal environment, right, that's the second environment, okay, yeah. Please, with the environment. The internal environment exists within the client system. The external environment exists inside the client system. A great environment, which is an environment that is created and developed unconsciously by the client and is symbolic of system wholeness. <laughs> When um, regarding the environment, the environment is a vital a arena that is gem to the system and its functions. Um, the environment may be viewed as all factors that affect and are affected by the systems. And in Newman's system model, it identifies three relative environment that is internal, external, and then created. <coughs> the internal environment exists within the client. Hello. The internal environment exists within the client system. And all forces and interactive influences that are solely within boundaries of the client system made up this environment. So meaning the internal environment exists within the client system alone. Now I'm moving on to the external environment. So the client system and created environment is unconsciously developed and is used by the client to support protective coping. Um, Madam, please, the next slide. Health. Human sees health as being equated with wellness. She defines health slash wellness as the condition in which all parts and subparts that's variable are in harmony with the whole of the client. That is a new one, 1995. She again, um, Newman defines like Newman's nursing theory. He defines health as the condition or degree of system stability and is viewed as a continuum from wellness to illness. When systems need are met, optimal awareness. <coughs> Optimal awareness. When system needs are met, optimal wellness exists. When needs are not satisfied, illness exists. Um, with this, uh, 
Ms. Newman said with a health, a health she, she, she is trying to say that um, when the system needs are met, like when our needs are being met, then it means that there is wellness. Like, there is wellness. And when the system, what the system needs is not given or the system's needs are not met, it means it is illness that exists, unlike how other people define health. When needs are not satisfied, illness exists. When the energy needed to support life is not available, death occurs. Please, I'm sent to you all. Uh, but in humans define nursing as action which assists individual, families, and group of group to maintain a maximum level of wellness. And the primary aim is stability of the patient client system through nursing intervention to reduce crisis. When we talk of um, wellness, it's an active process of becoming aware of making choices towards a healthy and fulfilling life or being free from illness. And when we talk of stability of a patient, is the quality or state of being stable by right? when the patient's health is being stable. And nursing intervention, as we all learned it last semester, when we talk of um, nursing intervention, they are actual treatments and actions that are performed to help the patient to reach the goals that are set for them. And also, um, Newman C. Nursing as a unique profession that is concerned with all of the variables which influence the person's response and a person might have a stressor. The, patient, the person sees as a whole and it is takes of nursing to address the whole person. When we talk of um, a patient a client variables, uh, it's a physiological, social culture, and develop developmental and spiritual function to achieve stability relation to the environment stress or experience by the client. And when we talk of um, person uh, seen as a whole, when something is whole, it means um, Hello. Yeah, hi. Hey, I did it. See you here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Betsy Newman system models.
Hello. Hello. Please, can you hear me? Yeah, we are listening. Hello. Okay. Please. But in we are system. But in Newman describes the Newman system model as a unique open system based perspective that provides a unifying focus for approaching a wide range of concerns. A system acts as a boundary for a single client, a group, or even a number of groups. It can also be defined as a social issue. A client system is interacted with the environment, delineates the domain of nursing concerns. <clears throat> the Newman system models views the client as an open system that responds to stresses in the environment. The client's variables are physiological, psychological, sociological, environmental, and then spiritual. As um, my sister Elizabeth already explained those factors, the client system consists of basic or core structures that is protected by illness, by lines of resistance. The usual level of health is defined as the normal line of defense. As normal line of defense that is protected by a flexible line of defense. She again um, said the stresses are the intra, inter, and extra personal in nature and arise from the internal, external, and curated environment, as I already explained. Please, are you explaining the, the image one. here or you are giving us another new information? Are you using the image to explain something? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, please. Nature and arise from the internal, external, and created environments. When stresses break through the flexible line of defense, the system is invaded and the lines of resistance are activated and the system is described as moving into illness on a wellness illness continuum. That is um, the break structure and line of defense. If adequate energy is available, the system will be reconstituted with the normal line of defense restored at below or above its, pre its previous level. It will be restored at below or above its previous level. As um, this thing is not that clear. <laughs> Nursing intervention okay through three preventive modalities. Um, according to Bettini, that is primary prevention, which occurs before the stressor invades the system. That's it. No, madam, please let okay. The diagram. And then I should go back to the diagram. Yes, please. Oh. <laughs> Nursing interventions occur through the three preventive model. That is primary, which. Hmm. 
Madam, the next slide. Hmm? Hmm. Which okay, that the primary prevention occurs before the stressor invades the system. That's so as we see the diagram, this is the primary prevention. It occurs before the stressor. The stressor invades the system. Secondary prevention also occurs after the system has reacted to an invading stressor, as shown in the diagram. And tertiary occurs after secondary prevention as reconstitution is being established. According to um, Betsy Newman system model, the following are the assumptions of accepted truths. Client system is unique, Com is a unique composite of factors and characteristics within a given range of responses. And then two, according to Newman system model, many known and unknown and universal stresses exist. Each differs in its potential for disturbing a client's usual stability level or normal line of defense. The particular interrelationships inter of clients variables at any point in time can affect the degree to which a client is protected by the flexible line of defense against possible reaction to stresses. Client, each client or client system has involved a normal range of responses to environment that is referred to as normal line of defense. Normal line of defense. The normal line of defense. The normal line of defense can be used as the normal line of defense can be used as a standard from which to measure health deviation. And the third one, when the flexible line of defense is no longer capable of protecting the client, client system against an environmental stressor the stressor breaks through the normal line of defense. This point, um, when the flexible line of defense is no longer capable of protecting a, a client, the system or the system against any environmental stressor, it breaks through normal line of defenses. Okay. Point four, the client whether in a state of wellness or illness is a dynamic composite of the interrelationships of the various, of the variables, sorry, according to the Newman system models. Wellness is on a continuum of available energy to support the system in an optimal state of system stability. Implicit within each client system are internal resistance factors known as lines of resistance which function to stabilize and realign the client to the usual wellness state. Um, if my dear Elizabeth, sister Elizabeth will continue from our primary prevention, she will highlight more on that. I see that your slide is deficient mm -hmm. of so many vital information regarding and Betty Newman's uh, model. And I think uh, you have to give us recent a better slide with the information. This is so, it's just like, um, I don't know how to, a skeleton with just the head, no body, no legs, nothing. Mm? So you realize that you are giving us so much information, mm -hmm. but we are unable to relate to the information so on the slides. Are you following? Uh, so please resend us another yes, please. Um, document with the all the vital because the essence of the Numa is to understand the primary, secondary, and tertiary prevention. 
again, we should also understand how the line of defense work for our patients. How do we care for our patients using the line of defense? What is the first line of defense? All that you are talking about, we are not um, following. And that is making the presentation a bit boring and a very, a also making it difficult to relate. And so please do well to send us a better information. You may not have time to present again. We we'll just send it to the class page for them to uh, follow. Okay. Group, how do you call it? Which group is the last group? Group five. Are you ready? Or would you send group members, group three? If you have the slides and you Hello. want to, you want to send and finish it up. Hopefully, that would be better. Do you have the information? Because I don't know my name is Sam Mokatri, and you, 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 picture now, picture now, Sam Mokano Fry, and then I don't know what you people were telling us. The image we are following plus the information you were just telling us. I, I was, I nearly dozed off. <laughs> it's, it's, um, more sending the proper slide. If you have it right now, you want to send that is okay. If you don't have it, you can do it later to the group page. They will rate you accordingly. Group five. Group three, do you want to finish it up properly or you'd want us to close and, 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 and give it to the, Call the next group. Okay. Yeah, Mama send your mail. Hello. Uh huh. Who wants them? Group three from who wants them? You are the same group that had issue with the surgery, right? I'm just wondering. That needed to re. Let me check. WhatsApp discussion. Are you the same group? Group three. Group three. <sighs> Hello, sister. Are you the same group that needed to re that Hello. needed to present again on the surgery? Is it the same? Yes, sister. Group? I was thought, yes, yes, sister. Why, why, why is this happening to you? Yes, all the time? please. What is what is the issue? Can we discuss going forward? Can we discuss what is the issue? I can see it's one person's work. You just go to the whatever, wherever, download anything and say it's for group. Who is doing that? And why is the entire you have virtually more than 10 people in this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten members, ten strong mm -hmm. members. Two, four, six, eight, ten. What is happening to you, to your group members? Why? Huh? Feel free and speak. This is the right platform. Sister, please, some of them don't show up. Some of them don't show up when we are doing the presentation. They don't show up. We don't even hear from them. They don't contribute. Let me have the name so that I know how much... Max, I'm sharing for there. Please give out the names. Those who have not. Okay. Uh huh. Group three. Um, sister. Um, this girl cry. Okay. I've forgotten the name. Sister, please, I'm coming. 
So let's quickly go to group five to finish. So that's, Madam. Uh, yeah. Hello. Madam. I'm the only one here. Hello. Hello. Madam, please, I'm the only one here. Pardon? I said I am the only one here. Group five, you are the only one available. Group five. You are the only one available. Yeah. Where are they? Yes. Yeah. Where are they? Where are no, your members? We don't have much time oh, to waste to. Pardon? Uh. No, I don't know. I've called them. Uh, call them. Call them. Tell them we are presenting. They should come online. So they are no, waiting for them. The... Nobody is minding. They present. They will finish it. No. And only you present, eh? So that will end. Will end this presentation. Me, I'm even tired. No. Let me share your. I can't see. Is it shared? Is it shared? Yes, no, please. Huh? Is it yes or no? Is it shared? Yes, please, it is shared. Uh -huh. No, it's not shared. Wow, well, she. Has come, but the topic has not. Come. Is it shared? Baba, it's shared. We can see the screen. All right. And let's go, my dear. Let's go and let's start. Finish. Start and let's finish. Hello. Hi. Your name for group five. What's it is shared. You can see the screen. Yes, it's shared. Um, Why well, you your network is not good? Introduction of NST when the bus to Owe.
Halo. Um, introduction of NST when the past theory. Hey, I'm here. 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 Hello. Madam, I'm not on or off. Huh? What's it saying? I'm showing you. Madam, 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 sir. What do you mean, Kasi? What's your name? Hello. The Hi. Hopping Art of Hi. The Hopping Art of Clinical Medicine was developed by an Australian department. For help through the observation of preventive behavior and symptoms. Exploration of the meaning of these symptoms. Determination of the cause of the discomfort. The, the, the determination of the patient's ability to resolve the discomfort. Or determining the patient's ability for help from the nurse or help provider. The way the person behaves and the sentence is told, the physical um, examination of this sentence, observation of preventive behavior and sentence. Hello. Yes. Uh huh. And I want to define the fact that the fact of identifying patients for help to observation of preventive behavior and symptoms. No. It's the first one. Hmm? Uh huh. It's me that. I'm explaining it. To. Yeah, we are listening. Okay. It means that if a patient has any mental he, he or she, if a patient has a mental disorder, or he or she is so sensitive, or any discomfort, Okay, so um, D5, I'm just finishing it up for you. Um, and it's in reading things, there's a theory which talks about the helping art, nursing as what? An art. Nursing as an art. And we all know what nursing is all about. If you are caring for your patient, if you are laying your patient's bed, if you are doing anything that you are doing for your patient, you have to add that ethics and the aesthetic beauty to it. And so we are saying that the helping act of a clinical nurse was developed the way we give helping or the way we care for our patient was being um, introduced by Ernestine Widenbeck. And it defines nursing as a practice of identifying a patient's need for help through observation of presenting behavior and symptoms, exploration of meaning of these symptoms, determination of the cause of discomfort, determination of the patient's ability to resolve the discomfort, as well as determining the patient has a need for help from the nurse or healthcare provider. So if you are a nurse on the ward and you are caring for your patient, we know the routine care of nurses checking of vital signs, administering of medications. Um, I mean, um, doing the normal routine care, that's not all about nursing, but there are times you just observe, you know, you observe your client and you assess what is really happening. There are times it's not all about medication. If you have a patient on your ward and he's taking his or her medication and you realize that the BP is still spiking, you know, it's still going high and high and high. There is a need to really check, explore. Explore means you are going to interact with the patient. 
find out what are some of the underlying cause of what is causing the BP to be rising high irrespective to the medication that is being given. You realize that after talking to this patient and the patient bringing out his fear and discomfort, that alone is enough to bring the BP within the normal rate. Same applies to patients who are diabetics. You give the injectables, you give the oral medication, yet you realize the glucose level is rising. There are times you have to probe further, check on your clients, find out what is causing the glucose level to be rising. It might not necessarily be that the medication is not working, no. There are times that this patient just need a physical a, a communication. Maybe the cause might be due to something, stress. We you know we talked about stresses. And anytime we talk about stress, people think about only physical stresses. We have emotional stresses, we have psychological stresses. And all these emotional, psychological stresses also um, hamper on people's health just like um, those who were talking about the line of defense. You know, once these stresses crosses the line of defense, you are unable to cope or manage with the situation or the stress. Hence, it has direct impact on your health. And so we are saying that if you are caring for your patient, that acts of you observing your patient to know that this patient is going through difficult times and there is a need for me to go extra mile to give the necessary care to my patient is what was um, Ernestine Wedenbeck talking about. His model defined nursing as the patient, as any patient receiving help from the healthcare system. So once your client is receiving any form of care from the healthcare system, that patient is defined as what, um, that is how nursing is all about. And he said in this, the nursing theory, the patient does not need to be ill or injured. You don't have to see the physical illness, like this patient is being diagnosed with malaria or is being diagnosed with or is having RTA, road traffic accident. No, that is not how we categorize patients. If I'm come, as I rightly mentioned, if I come in and maybe I don't have any ailment at all, but I, I, there are times we feel exhausted, so tired, and you can't pinpoint which kind of disease condition you are going through, but you realize that you don't feel okay. Maybe psychologically, you are you, there is so much weight on you, and so there, there there's a time that you even need just to talk to a clinical psychologist to allay those trouble moments that you uh, experience. A patient needs for help is defined as a measure desired by the patient that can potentially restore and the extent of the patient's ability to cope with situations that affects his health in this nursing theory. So we are saying that with nursing with basis, the fact that you have identified yourself as having problem and seeking for psychological care, even at the clinical psychologist setting, at that point, you can be called as a patient. And you know that at this point, I can't cope with the situation by myself. So I need to seek for a clinical psychologist or anybody within the health jurisdiction to help me cope with the problem I'm experiencing. Rudimir explains that clinical judgment represents the nurse's life to make sound decisions, which are also based on Mariam is calling. I don't know what the problem is. Why is she calling? Mariam, I've seen that you are calling. Is there any problem? Is Mariam on the platform? Or oh, she's off? Okay. So, um, William May explains that clinical judgment represents the next likeness to make sound decisions, 
which are based in a differentiating factors no. and assumptions. No, she's not. Are relating them to cause and effect. Sound <coughs> judgment is the result of discipline function in the mind and emotion. She was, but she left. Oh, okay. In the theory, nursing schools are carried out in order to achieve specific patient-centered purpose, rather than completing the schools is solving the end goal. As I rightly mentioned earlier, I said we have routine nursing skills and care that we give to our patients. But the resulting function is your ability to assume, to come out with different, I mean, clinical judgments, to know what is causing my patient to not recover and not being discharged. That extra skills, that's, that's, that extra skills is what we tend or we call or we do associate with the arts of nursing. Just like having a practical session and you are being asked to give, um, um, to do treatment of pressure areas. The ideal thing of treatment of pressure areas is, in, you know, in the course of the process, you realize that no, this patient, I should, I should assess whether this patient you know, it's bedridden. Let me assess if this patient would want to wee wee or poo poo. If he can and I can assist, that's an added plus. The main goal of your intent of that task was to just treat pressure areas. But you realize that no, this patient has been bedridden and might want to either wee wee or poo poo. So let me attend to that first. If you check and this patient has probably saw the learning, you would wish to change, clean up the patient, give a, a, a well-protected bed so that after the treatment of pressure areas, the patient will be comfortable in bed. That additional sound judgment or that decision you were able to come out with before caring for your patient in bed uh, is what um, Ernestine is talking about. He said, um, helping the patients and the scene is talking about three main elements here. The philosophy, the purpose, and the practice, as well as the arts. And then the philosophy here, he said the nurse, his or her attitude, they believe about the nurse, how they affect reality to, for him or her. There are three essential components regarding the philosophy of nurse, and that's the reverence for life, respect for dignity, if you talk about reverence for life, why am I caring for this patient? The essence of this is to what? The patient to recover, not the patient to die. So your need or your act of caring for your nurse, your patient is to make sure your patient recover and lives, but not to care for the patient to die. That's the reverence for life. Now respect for dignity, worth, autonomy, and individuality of the patient. We should respect the individual as someone who can make decisions for him or herself. Let's assume it's time for me to serve meals for my patient. Here, the autonomy is to plan the diet with the patient. Let the patient feel part of the decision making. Okay, I'm going to serve food for my clients. Then I have to come and talk to my clients. Please, what food would you wish me to serve for you? Maybe she might have variety of options and he will now tell you, I wish to take this meal or that. Involving or planning the diet with your patient at that point in time, you make the patient feel worth, you make the patient feel dignified, and he feels, yes, I'm an individual whose right is being respected. And that alone is also another way of what giving a proper nursing care to your patient. Now, resolution to act on personal and professional health beliefs. Here we have, if you're a nurse, you have your own um, personal beliefs, but we are saying that you have to be able to resolve your personal belief from that of your patient. Do not try to impose what you believe on your patient. The purpose, the nurse, the nurse wants to accomplish through her actions. It encompasses all the activity directed towards the overall good of the patient. The purpose of our nursing care is what alleviate pain suffering to help the patient recover quickly and probably to be able to take control of the patient's own health 
depending on which philosophy you are using, the purpose for which you are caring for your patient must be achieved and you have to do diligent work and act through practice to make sure those goals you set for yourself, you've been able to achieve. The practice here we talk about observing nursing actions affected by the beliefs, feelings about meeting the patient needs for help. So we are saying that if you are caring for your patients, we know they have their own belief system, their own belief models. Let's try and respect them. All is part of what caring for your patients. Then the arts, I've talked about the arts, the aesthetic way, doing things in the right way, and then making sure you enhance the ability, the, you direct the activities related to medical plan to improve your patient's health, just like I mentioned. Oh, yeah, you have a focus to achieve. At the end of the day, what are you doing differently to make sure you achieve it without any um, contradicting the main essence of care that you intend giving? So here you say that the next focuses, focus is also on the prevention of complication related to the reoccurrence or development of new concerns. So as I already mentioned, you are caring for your patient. You are talking about treatment of pressure areas here. Now that you are going to take care of treatment of pressure area and the patient has defecated or has solved the lining with either urine or feces, but your folk, all you will intend doing is what to just treat the pressure area. Have you forgotten that leaving your patient in that soiled lining can even complicate what you were trying to prevent in the name of caring for your patient? So doing something extra to prevent further complications if you change the learning, if you wipe the patient off the fetal contents or urine, if you, and then changing the patient every two hours and all that. Doing all these things will prevent the development of the pressure source. So you don't run away from caring for the um, personal hygiene at that point in time and just focus on just the caring of the fecal, uh, sorry, treatment of the pressure area. So this is all about the art, doing something extra. You want to feed your patient. You have to pray with your patient. You have to put some flower pots to make it so beautiful to whet the appetite of your patient. All these things being done is a form of an art, the aesthetic way of making the, I mean, care beautiful. I don't know the prescriptive theory. So we are saying that an Eastern based theory is a prescriptive theory. And it's a type of theory that stipulates what healthcare professional must do to attain the prescribed goal. They are the actions that the nurse deems appropriate to fulfill a main purpose. And it's based on three main factors. That's the central purpose, the prescription, and its realities. Here, the central purpose defines the quality of nursing care that you give your patients. What kind of care are you giving to your patient? Is it of high quality or you are just doing a routine care? So whatever activity you are doing should be of a great standard so that your patients will feel very good in the hands of a very good potent and potential health personnel. And then the prescription here are appropriate nursing actions selected to create and implement a care plan in accordance with the central purpose. And then the reality, there are also aspects of the situation that influences the nursing outcome. What are some of the things that may, talking about the prescription here, we are talking about appropriate nursing actions. I mentioned whatever you are doing, make sure it is evidence-based. You don't just bring flower pots. When we talk about flower pots on probably the serving tree, just remember that you don't go and bring a flower pot that can even break or make your food fall. It should be something portable, something that can wet appetite and all that. So whatever actions you are doing, it has to be what evidence-based. And there are also aspects of the situation that influence the nascent outcome. If you are doing any activity, know the rationale, 
so that you can also let the patient know that this thing will help you to change every two hours will prevent you from developing pressure sores and in this with this you'll be able to appreciate or the client would also appreciate the care that is being given and so end here with the theories i believe once it's being recorded um, most those who made the class can follow and then if you have any questions you can just bring it on board for us to discuss and resolve it accordingly okay any questions from the class members group five who is currently present at the moment group five your name you have only one participant present for group five what's your name please your name your name can you type it i can't see so please type it at the um the chat column okay where you have the chat column please and um, type your name there index number or number near thing you part three Chat call on the okay. We say chat call on the dying. We so on type your idea on the program. But I see Um, please, any question from the group? Um, those currently, any question? No question, I upon, upon theories. Then I'll see what is next present and then we'll close for the day. Maria was calling. I don't know what the problem is. Maria, Maria. Let me 
insurance from Abuja. And she said she's trying to connect, but she's having some difficulties. That's why. That's a good connect. Yes, please. And data because she was in at first and she left. But she said after she had been trying to connect, but she's not able. I've got him. It's true. Today, the network, how I'm suffering here. Hello. Uh -huh. You are trying to call. You try to call. Yeah. You were asking of me. That was why I called. I was calling. I realize you are offline. There are no more with us. Uh, it's on and off. Oh. Oh, okay. I was thinking your data has. Uh, I think it's just the network problem. Okay, then. It's the same hill. It's the same. Oh. Is there any question? Any question? Uh-huh. Hello, madam. Yeah, hello. Please, I'm listening. Madam. Yes. I'm listening, no, madam. Muka, madam. Yeah, yes, no, nothing. Uh huh. It's not a question. I was saying that uh -huh. I'm in group five, but I couldn't connect the network. Hey, group five from the beginning to the end, then from the beginning of the yes, lecture. I was saying that. To, today, you didn't plan coming, you didn't plan joining the. Yes. Group. Huh? No, it's 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 not that I joined. I joined, but I couldn't. It's like when I talk, it's like nobody hears. Mm -hmm. okay. Your name is what? So you are the only one available for. Yes. Any question? Okay, so um, if you don't have any questions, I think uh, we can.
call it a day. And then, by God willing, um, next week, Monday, that's an election day. Can we, is it possible we should have yes, a class? Yes, sister. Should we have a class so we should, we should also enjoy the holiday as such? And then we are going to our hometown to vote too. Pardon? I enjoyed the holiday. We are going to vote. See you. We are traveling no, to vote. We are going to vote. You are traveling to go and vote, eh? So now Monday, yes, so Monday will be out, but Tuesday, day after the traveling, you will reach your hometown. You can still connect to the. <laughs> uh, uh, I hope that is a fair. Tuesday, day. we we'll use it to relieve ourselves from. You use it for what? Relieve ourselves from stress. From stress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And then Friday, stress. And then Friday too. Maybe I now party and we need to be depressed. Now party, we move in your mind, we need your own What are they doing for you? Or you have some special packages from the party you are joining? Madam, I am in Kuan. Oh. Make a time, you know. I never say a bin of we knew, we knew. we 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 Party will honor say you increase here, so be a bene biana. And found us a way different party and only a party. I see a party and winning a big basson as a way increase here, fellow. I say, yeah, big deal. And see Tuesday, who person would you mind whom you are no problem? Friday near me, Tiana. And a Friday, so we must have a Yes, sister. And a Friday, so we must have a job. Who me? No problem. My brother. Daddy, sister, Friday. And the most most job. Who me? In December, the day and this is here. December and the not January. So we meet on Friday. Madam, that when you be breaking, be breaking. It's by Friday. Friday, but by that time, no anxiety. Nini now. Sister. Hello. Friday we will meet. Hello. 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 Yeah, yeah, set it. Yeah, set the questions. Need the question. They say presentation in answer. All presentations are duly being. And uh, by next week, you let me in. What's it? So next week, you let me in. Catch up by next week, you let me in. You ready? You let me in. We have other topics now. Oh, we are just hoping. See, it's me, we are, that is good news for all of us. Then you just have ample time to read on your own. As I have Friday back open, how are we, how possible are we supposed, just look at the course content. I know the big guy do. Hmm? Madam Tuesday, baby, two I and few of you are. Oh dear, my 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 few will be away. Yenji at home, my bra, my so my bra pant. Oh dear, my Yenji at home, Friday, my my yard, my why? Yeah, 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 yeah. The following week, the following week, yeah, yeah. I'm sure say not last day, yeah, yeah, yeah. The day I make same revision, no. No more the akufia ko akusiya ma di. Why? Make same day. Ah, make some revision. See, I say, you better share questions and answers. Make some deal. Nia, yeah, 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 yeah,
Miss uh, Sandra, uh, you read that now. Yes, your corrections. Uh, okay. Are you interested? Oh, yeah, interested. Right, right. uh -huh. That's yes, yeah. yes, sister. We are interested. Your corrections. Uh, then one on a fade and which are to cry. Why? Yeah, but go through. And we go through to the end. Oh, your question, Cynthia. Martin. You're interested. Martin. I think so we can close the day. So God yes, bless Friday. We'll meet again. Yes, ma'am. And then we'll try and finish up all the areas we haven't touched yet. Then we'll break for good. More Miss Problem be a Miss Remo. Why? Yo. All right. So we'll close the day. Stay safe. Vote wisely. And stay blessed. As for voting wisely, wise is in the eyes of the beholder. Ain't you know? Obiam vote. Yeah. Obia voted the number of feet in the bomb on Kaye. Obia voted the pay. Say, Kia don't want to open crowd voting man. Also, your power lies in your right to vote. I if you are if you are don't want to let him go to a little bit. I'm also there. I'm president. They said the politics. <laughs> it's a politics. <laughs> yeah, the best way here, yeah, the way we need to so move on. Some mutual say, "I mean, I'm not my smart ass." Yes, yes, I hear you. I mean, I'm not my. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I mean, you. Nipa, you hear me? Kura, no, oh dear, I mean, I hear It's whoever comes. I mean, I'm not my. Ni afa. Whoever <laughs> 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 What's it? My name is Mimi, a sympathizer voter. Mimi, a voting voter, you see. I never join him. One after one more debate. I never join him in your court to make your donk or floating voters, no moon in a mumbra near court to make your donk. You stay safe, wife. Stay blessed. Take care of yourselves. All right. All right. Bye. 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 I
Thank you. 